This is live on KEXP on listener-powered radio, streaming worldwide at KEXP.org and in Seattle, Washington, on your radio dial at 90.3 FM and, of course, on the mobile apps. And these live on-in-studio performances are made possible because your donations. So please visit KEXP.org slash live. I'm Eva Walker, and we are in the live room with the one and only The Mountain Goats. Hey, y'all. What's happening? Hey, hey, hey. They're going to play four songs for us, and then we're going to chat a bit afterwards. Does that sound good? Yes. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do this, John. I'm going to rise up early. Secret chamber in my heart clean Polish every surface To a brilliant sheen Remain positive and stay on the grind Banish every other thought from my mind I'm gonna make you suffer I'm gonna make you suffer your yes be yes and your no come from deep in your belly I'm gonna make you suffer There was a captain many years at sea Living the life of the sailor Rugged and free, nothing but the sky Jumping out of my skin This tiny 
sector can't contain me Suit up in a flash Slipping symbols bravely, bravely Go where I'm not wanted Stand where the light hits hard Almost full grown Drive home alone and listen to the slow parts In a new universe Trying to find the mask that fits me Shaking the curve Behaving as the beacons bid me Silver strap to please the diehards Let me dance till I die Turn the volume up high and listen to the slow part Alien ships from ancient realms Ageless captains at their helms Reach from the sea let it begin with me Half life of my toxins Difficult to calculate
Yeah. Good, Mountain goats. Mountain goats. Mountain goats. Come on, goats on KXP. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we carry our own back announcer. <laughs> Am I going to the piano now, Peter? Should I, should I go over to the piano do my it's thing? Your, it's your turn to play piano. My turn to play. Yeah. I can say it's, uh, wait, wait, wait. I earned it just now. Yeah. Clean slate. Oh, you want, yeah, go ahead and give me a beat. It's fun to play the new ones. There's <laughs> <laughs> still the thrill of like, hope I get this right. So, uh, <laughs> fellas, where do I go now? Back to guitar. Sounds like a plan. This is the Mountain Goats on KEXP. I think as a lead singer, growth in a band is exactly this. When you're new at it, 
for maybe for 15 or 20 years if you're slow um, like me, you want to say, this is what I'm doing. And I'm telling you what I'm doing. And as you grow, you say, no, you tell me what to do and I'll just do the thing. You know, <laughs> Peter, what am I playing? Um, hostages. Oh man, this is a song. This is, this is a religious number. It's a, it's a song about, you know, it's like we, we, we may, we may sometimes run out of electricity or run out of funds and we may run out of bullets, but we're never going to run out of hostages. It's called hostages. Noise in the break room. Nasty points on the raft. And they're breaking into the broadcast now. Special update from Action News. Some of what you'll hear in the footage that follows may not reflect our station's views. We may run out of bullets. We're never gonna run out of hostages. There's disagreements on procedure. Local bitter division. It is often the case in situations like this one I'll be the one who makes the final decision Some of you have been here before Most of you have not Some will dwell on the details of the future or work to keep it out of their thoughts. We may run out of bullets. We're never gonna run out of hostages. If there's one thing I love, it's an infinite resource. If there's one thing worth loving, it's a surplus of supplies On the rooftop, well, good luck to the team. When you know you'll never make it out alive, you kind of get to live out your dream. Helicopters in the distance. Music of the spheres on the wind It's gonna be a last ride from here down to the exit Some might look back and laugh at the end We may run out of bullets
Here, did you see what happened? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that worked. That's cool. <laughs> the Mountain Goats here on KEXP. Thanks for being here, y'all. Sure. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Let's talk. Is that okay? Yes. Great. Uh, okay. So you have a new record coming out. So I'm going to, I'm just immediately going there. Um, and I got, I got a, a lot. I'm going to preface this question with something and it's, it's kind of a lot. But we'll see what happens. That's cool. I, I was just—I like to imagine being a different kind of interview subject than I am because I'm forthcoming and direct. Like you get 100% of me when you talk to me. But like, what if I was? Like, oh, you know, we, we don't like to talk about the new ones. So <laughs> the manager would be on the phone. It's like somebody go in there and tell him he's here to talk about the new ones. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of sequels are made, you know, um, a year or a few years after. But the space between the 2002 album and. Uh, which is called All Hail Texas or West Texas. And then this new album, Jenny from Thebes, uh, feels the, the distance feels more realistic. And I say that because changes, especially in small towns, they don't happen very fast. And uh, my, my family's from the South, so oh, they, where, where they the know South this are very from? well. My grandpa was from Bayou Gula, very small, oh, unincorporated wow. town in Louisiana. Amazing, yeah. 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 Um, and it, it still hasn't changed very much. <laughs> um, so, you have us revisiting this story, or if I could say epic, um, and uh, after 20 plus years, and it, me personally, it makes me think of music that came out of the civil rights movement and music that's being written now and how they're not much different, right? And so um, changing, we know that changing a whole country, especially when everyone doesn't participate, takes quite a bit, <laughs> uh, a small town, but also changing one's situation and surroundings. <sighs> With all of that being said, did you always know you were going to revisit this story um, or did it stem from your own curiosity later? Where you, did you ask yourself, what the hell is Jenny and everyone doing right now? So it's much more the latter. I'm I'm really resistive to doing sequels and follow-ups because it always feels like you know, especially like doing a sequel to something that wasn't successful, that I'd be more likely to do, right? But like Ohio West Texas, when it was reissued on vinyl, that became like our first time hitting number one on the billboard charts, on the vinyl chart. So like so I'm always very resistive to doing sequels to things that were successful because I don't want to be crass. You know, you don't mm -hmm. want to say, Oh, you liked this, here's some more of this. It sort of feels, you know unclassy to me it's like i don't i don't usually do a part two and the characters get one bite at the apple and they're gone and uh but i sat down at the piano one day and i uh just played a chord and i liked the progression i had and the way i write is usually just to ad lib to the first freestyle the first couple lines off the top of my head and see if anything comes out right if nothing does maybe the whole song just goes away uh but on this one i the first song i wrote for the record was one called jenny three and the first line is jenny was a warrior jenny was a thief it just happened to fit into the it came out of my skull mm -hmm. and i went and that felt really transgressive to me because like I say I don't normally do that right it's like I, that's normally not me that's fun right to do something that you wouldn't normally do you know I'm Catholic by disposition so it's like I'm doing something I'm not supposed to do according to my own rules right so that's where the sweet part is is I get to sort of you get to break a you know transgress a little bit so that that's how it happened is like you know but I wouldn't to do it within in close space would, would have just felt weird you know yeah, yeah, I was raised Catholic. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, no, no, it's a super Catholic thing. It's yeah. like, set up a bunch of things you're not supposed uh -huh. to do, and then very carefully and for maximum payoff, pick the one you're going to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I also read in an interview, just keeping with the the um, with the topic of this album and these characters, uh, I read an interview you did a couple years ago, and you said something that really stuck out to me you were talking about dreams which is my jam oh yeah yeah and uh when people show up in your uh, dreams uh it's typically an extension of yourself yeah. and um the brain quote the brain doesn't even know that other people exist and so when right. writing songs uh and you have especially other characters in it you're kind of telling on yourself or you're yeah. kind of you know uh you're, yeah, I guess that's the best way to put it. You're kind of telling on yourself. So I wanted to ask, 
where would you say in this album is your story most represented? Would that be the emotions of the characters, their environment, or just Jenny? So that's a super great question. Uh, what, what she's talking about is there's, there's there's as many ways to read dreams as, you know, there, there's many. But one way I was given by a therapist once is to, is to understand that your psyche at, at its most base level doesn't really know for sure that other people exist besides you, mm -hmm. right? Maybe your mom, right? Maybe from that most basic, but beyond that, no. And, uh, and so any character in a dream, whatever they're doing, you can read and like I say, this is not, this is just a way of looking. There's a lot of ways, right? But, uh, but, but one useful thing you can do is to consider every actor in the dream to be yourself, right? I think that's also true to some extent in writing, although I think it's, for me it's important to, to sort of be unaware of that when I'm mm -hmm. writing because I don't, I don't generally want to be talking about myself. There's plenty of that, right? So, uh, but, but I think the, I thought about this a lot when I was writing this because when I was filling in the backstory for this character, Jenny, who we only previously knew from a few songs, and what we mainly know about her is that she has a motorcycle and she disappeared at one point, right? And it sounds like things didn't go that great for her after she left. Um, and so I started filling in the story and asking, well, what did she do? You know, I picked, you know, murdered somebody. So I murdered a landlord. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, but, but she also, uh, because it was a song in Ohio West Texas called uh, Color in Your Cheeks, which was about a house where people can come and, and crash and be safe. That relates to me having once been a nurse, right? I mean, there's a similar caretaking impulse, right? Mm -hmm. So if you ever worked in the caring professions, part of it goes with you. And, uh, and so, so I relate to her in that sense, you know, um, uh, a lot more, you know, but on the other hand, the lodger who comes and crashes at her house, who she develops an affinity for, that's absolutely me. Like that guy's detoxing mm -hmm. when he gets there. That's younger me, right? So any character is a version of yourself to some extent. Uh, I, I really think that's true and that, and that that's where you get your, your, your empathy for them is to understand that you're sort of trying to, to paint a complete picture of yourself by populating a whole world with versions of you. Right? Yeah. Are you a lucid dreamer? What Often, where you uh, where you dream and then you become aware that you're dreaming. Seldom. Uh, this morning I had one that I, I was kind oh. of as I was waking up I was remembering. I didn't write it down. It involved uh, uh, being at the at the uh, the Temple of Gold Krishna Commune in West Virginia, and I, I was waking people up there. They, they were oh. sleeping. I was, but uh, but that's all I really remember about it. Um, yeah. Wow. I, it's it's fun, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but usually I'm not aware until the very like maybe the last minute. Yeah. So yeah, it actually helps to become lucid if you're having a nightmare. You're like, wait, no, this isn't. You're shaking your head like you know what that's like. <laughs> no, that's the only time that I that yeah. I ever like have <clears throat> control of a dream is like if I'm having a a nightmare and and like some part of me registers it and goes. Oh yeah, dude, you gotta wake up. <laughs> yeah. It's like no, end it. That and I just, and I just kind of like you know, just <laughs> and yeah. then and then it just uh then I wake up. And then the other side of that is if you are lucid dreaming and then you actually which sounds insulting to my ourselves, but if you look into a mirror, then you could potentially turn it into a nightmare. I don't know if you've ever heard that before. No. No. Did I say dreaming is my jam? Yeah, you're into it. Open with it. <laughs> um, before we run out of time, I got more stuff to no, ask No, I you. love that as a place to go. You should bring your jam to the interview. It's like, cause it, cause the thing is, like, obviously, if there's a new record coming out, you're supposed to talk about it a lot, but we already did that, so you can talk about what you, whatever you like, and it's cool. So. <laughs> yeah, this won't end, though. I have a limited amount of time. Um, as someone with such a large body of work, I think your first album came out when I, I think I was three years old, I saw. <laughs> Not that you asked about that. Did you buy uh, it? Did you? Yeah, of course I did. <laughs> uh, as, with, with such a large body of work, when you write a new album, how much of it is discovery of you and how much of it is rediscovery of things that have worked in the past? Um, another good question. Uh, the thing is, you want to strike a balance between those. You want to always be doing something new uh, as much as much as you can. Uh, uh, and, and the thing is also making an album is a long process. Like I write by myself, right? I write at the piano or at the guitar by myself. Then I send them out to the guys. Then they ignore them until they have five or six of them. Um, and, and then I have to look pathetic and go, did you guys hear the song? I thought it was pretty good. You know, it's fish for compliments, you know, like, 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 like with a tin cup I was walking up and saying, Hey fellas, I thought that one was really nice. Nothing. Just crickets, right? You got an immediate and very enthusiastic response from me from the last song. No, that's said. the thing. It's like when Peter, really likes what I will hear inside of 30 seconds so, because because he knows that there's a possibility I'll forget the song existed right? so, but uh, like he'll he'll be like put a pin in this we like this one we're going to do this one so but um, uh, oh my god what was the question um, uh, oh it was about building on past stuff versus new stuff so I'm always wanting to favor doing something new right always wanting to do that that's how you stay uh, 
alive to your own stuff. Um, and I try not to be too much in conversation with old stuff because I know that's going to take care of itself, mm. right? It's like in the writing, in, in my tendencies to go to certain chords or voicing, you know, this, this, this stuff will take care of itself. You have your tendencies. So you will connect to your older work almost inevitably, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, and the trick is in trying to break free from some of your habits. So you keep moving forward. You don't wind up just sort of revisiting something you've already done. Yeah. Wow. And I'm going to go off my script here and ask this yes. last question. Um, so are you familiar with the golden record on Voyager? Yeah. One and two? Okay. Everybody knows what this is, uh -huh. the golden record on Voyager, the, the LP they sent into space? Yeah. Uh, if the Mountain Goats could put a song on the golden, a new golden record to be launched into space, is there not an album, just one song? What song comes to mind? I Love Supreme by Jean Coltrane. <laughs> <laughs> without question i was mean, like if they're sending something up in space and it doesn't have that on it first then i'm going to step out of the way <laughs> so, but, okay uh, that's on there so what mountain goat song goes on so there? what comes after the jungle <laughs> train song um that's it wow um i mean i mean the thing is like our most popular song is this year right and no children um uh but I mean, but I would probably pick something perverse and make it like, you know, uh, like Hair Match from, <laughs> from, you know what I mean? Hair Match is a very long and slow song about, uh, about the end of a wrestling match where one guy's getting his head shaved in the middle of the ring. And I figure if the idea is that when somebody finds it, they're hearing it and being exposed to something that they didn't know about, I'd rather it be something weird than the one that everybody already liked, you know, and, 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 and so, yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's a good. That's a good answer. Thank good you. one. <laughs> thanks, guys, for being here. Yeah, it was fun. Man, thank you. Uh, thanks, John, Peter, Matt, John. That's that. That's a very kind of Catholic order. I just did there. That's, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Mountain Goes for being here on KEXP. This is listener powered ninety point three FM in Seattle, Washington, streaming worldwide at kexp.org and on the mobile apps. And these live on in studio performances are made possible by your donations. So please visit kexp.org slash live. Thank you once again to the Mountain Goats for being here. Pleasure. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Discover great music at kexp.org.